Hi, this is Felicia Hom with examiner.com at the LA Asian Pacific Film Fest with Kaya Wolford, writer and director of The Homana. Awesome. Did I say that right? Yeah, The Homana, yes, very good. Thank you. But for us ignorant people out there, <laughs> can you tell us what that exactly means? Sure. Um, Haumana literally means student. And there's a poetic version of it, how, uh, meaning to lay before, and mana, um, masticated food. So sort of the poetic uh, uh, connotation is that it's the passing down of life and of knowledge. Oh, wow. Okay. All right. So could you also tell us a little bit about your film? What's it about? Sure. Uh, it's about a group of uh, boys, a high school hula group, who lose their teacher, their kumuhula, their hula master teacher. And the least likely candidate is chosen to lead them in a cultural event. But through leading them, he reconnects with the culture he had previously abandoned. And why is he the least likely candidate? Because of his lifestyle now. He used to be involved with hula when he was a kid and had, you know, stopped and gone into other things. <laughs> Got himself into other parts of, of life. Okay, I understand. <laughs> so I, I, I viewed the trailer. It was well done. Thank you. I really would like to know more about the gods you were speaking of. Mm. I know the gods were mentioned. So can you yes. tell us a little about, about um, what sort of gods there are in Hawaii and a little bit about um, the culture and sure. history? Sure. So in, in Hawaiian culture, there are deity, and especially for hula dancers, um, hula was... Uh, used to honor uh, the gods, meaning there's uh, Pele, uh, the volcano goddess, Laka, the goddess of Hula and of the forest, and, and just many, many others. Um, and with the colonization and um, the mentality of, of, I guess, you know, for lack of better words, Christianity, the idea of one god, um, but we believe that it's everything is God, um, and and when we dance, we honor it all. Meaning, which which really means it's basically semantics, honoring the the same uh, deity. Okay, yeah. great. Um, so I also heard that you danced hula. Is that the right term to say dance hula? Can yes, I say that? <laughs> absolutely. Yes. Okay. And I still dance hula. I am still a very active hula dancer. Yes. When did you start? Um, I started actually dancing in high school. And, uh, you know, when I left and, and pursued my career, um, I had stopped. And then when I moved back home to Hawaii, I was very fortunate to be a part of, uh, become a part of my kumu, Robert Kazumaro's Halau na Kamele o Lililehua. Yeah. And I still, again, today am a very active member in, in it. Yeah. So is uh, your film based on any sort of events that happened in your life? Was there a specific inspiration? Yes, actually. It's actually based on my one-man show, Island, which is about how I find my identity through traditional hula. And um, it's, it's a part of it, so it's a, a loose adaptation of it. Uh, and, and from touring the show, it toured for about three years around, and just seeing the reactions and... and also, but seeing the misperceptions of, of hula, uh, you know, people not even realizing that men danced hula, um, it was a huge inspiration to, to show in hopefully an ent entertaining way uh, a little bit more uh, about our culture and that hula is a lot more deep than people realize. Yeah, oh, yeah definitely. I, I must admit, I really didn't know much about hula yeah. except they wear flowers. <laughs> they wear flowers. Well, that's, that's true. Yes, we do wear flowers. Yeah. Could you tell us a little bit about the necklace you're wearing, oh, sure. too? So this is not a flower. It's actually a shell. <laughs> no, I don't. Um, um, these are called Ni'ihau shells, and they're from an island where this is the only place you can get the shells. Um, and it's from the island, actually, that is not open to the public. Oh, um, yeah, okay. so these are very rare, very special. I mean, I think sometimes the, the tide will take them to Kauai or, or something, but these are very rare. And the artistry that goes into this um, make them very, uh, very prized 
possessions, and I'm very lucky to have one. <laughs> so, uh, how do you actually get onto this private island? Or uh, you must be invited, and I have not been invited. So, I kind of uh, am very honored that I still even have this piece. Oh, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Hello. All right. So, uh, are you looking forward to directing any more films, or do you have any other projects that you're cooking up in your mind yes. right now? Yes, absolutely. Um, I am very. This was such an amazing experience, and um, I would really, really love to do more. I am collaborating with a couple of people on a couple of uh, uh, potential projects, and then I also have one that I'm working on for myself. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Was there anything that you found particularly challenging with the Homana or something that you learned that you could take to your next project? <laughs> Basically, the whole process. <laughs> no. um, but I just had such an amazing group of people working on it that, um, I mean, it really was one of the most stressful times of my life, but at the same time, one of the most rewarding. And, and I'm sure, you know, we did this on a micro budget but with a huge community backing. And like indie, fil indie films, there are things that will occur that might not necessarily happen on a bigger budget film, but I, at any level, making a film is, is really, it is a little miracle when all of these people working together to, for one common vision, and there are, because there are so many people working on it, there are places that could fall through or whatever, um, but yeah, I, I learned so, so much on this, and hopefully the next one will be that much smoother, but you know, there's challenges every single day, so. <laughs> yeah. uh, so will you be, do you plan on ever acting in any of your own films, oh. like acting and directing at the same time? Yeah. Like. Yes, I would love to. Uh, I chose not to for this particular one because of the sheer amount of work that it would require for both, you know, the character, the lead character, and directing, and then on top of that, producing. And it wouldn't have, I wouldn't have been able to give my all to either if I had done that. And I really, it was really important for me for the overall project to to uh, to give everything and look at the big picture mm -hmm. to not uh, uh, undercut any anything and, and had I done that it I feel like it would have suffered yeah okay so uh, do you plan on doing more acting or directing in the future wow I would love to do both I mean yeah. yes in an ideal world um, I would love to do both because I really really love both yeah okay and now that you have experience as a director um, does that change uh, or do you have a better sense as an actor what the director is looking for? Or do you better understand what goes through their mind? Yes, actually, you know what? I felt that that came in really, really handy. Um, and I know when I was studying acting, there were directors in our class. And uh, I have to say that I have such a respect for both crafts. Um, and I, I feel like being an actor myself really gave me an advantage and a lot of the kids in the film did not have um, necessarily formal acting training and to be able to uh, sort of morph to what they needed um, really the, the training came in very very handy so one actor might not have responded to the way I was explaining it uh, from actor to actor and so yeah it really really helped inform that Okay, well, thank you so much t thank for your you. time, Kale. I had a great time talking to you and learning about c the Hawaiian culture awesome. and hula. Thank you so much for thank having you. me. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you. We look forward to seeing it.